Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would ask unanimous consent that the following uh, articles be placed in the record. The first is an article entitled, Exclusive Trump Loyalist Matthew Whitaker was counseling the White House on investigating Clinton. A second article, Sessions replacement Matthew Whitaker called Mueller's appointment ridiculous and a little fishy. Third article, all the time, Robert Mueller's new boss railed against the Russia probe. Trump's pick to replace Jeff Sessions once said Mueller investigation risk becoming a witch hunt. And finally, an article entitled, Trump's new acting attorney general once mused about defending Robert Mueller. Without objection, these documents will be placed in the record. I now recognize the gentleman for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Whitaker, I'm going to be really straight with you up front. I'm going to cut you off if you make long speeches. We have very limited time. You do not need to thank me for asking the question or compliment me that it's a good one. I'll assume they're all good questions and you're grateful. One, you were briefed by the special counsel. You've acknowledged that. Did you share that information with any members of your staff, the information you learned in that briefing from the special counsel or his team? Congressman, as I previously testified, there was one other individual in that briefing with And who is that individual? Um, it is the U.S. Attorney from the Eastern District of California who I've brought on. What, what is the name place. of the individual, Mr. Whitaker? Uh, his name is Greg Scott. So that's the, did you communicate any information you learned in those briefings to other members of your staff? I don't believe so, no. Do you know whether any information that you learned in those briefings were communicated to anyone at the White House? As I mentioned previously, Congressman, we have kept a very close... Mr. Whitaker, it's a yes or a no. Do you know whether it was communicated to anybody at the White House? As I sit here today, I don't, I don't, I don't know whether it was communicated. Did you, I do did not you believe put Mr. into Scott place Ryan. any restrictions or limitations or instructions to your staff not to share this information with anyone at the White House or the president's legal team? Yes, together with the general standard that investigative information and materials are need to know and law enforcement. Thank you, Mr. Whitaker. Did, did the president lash out at you after Michael Cohen's guilty plea for lying to Congress about a Trump organization project to build a tower in Moscow? The president specifically tweeted that he had not lashed out. Did, did, I'm asking you, Mr. Whitaker, did the president lash out at you? I'm not asking you what he tweeted. I don't have a lot of confidence in the veracity of his tweets. I'm asking you under oath. Congressman, that is based on an unsubstantiated... Sir, answer the question, yes or no. Did the president lash out to you about Mr. Cohen's guilty plea? No, he did not. And did anyone from the White House or anyone on the president's behalf lash out at you? No. Uh, Mr. Whitaker, did the president lash out to you on or about December 8th? 2018 to discuss a case before the Southern District in New York where he was identified as individual one? No, Congressman. Did anyone on the President's behalf, either out, inside the White House or outside the White House, contact you to lash out or express dissatisfaction? Did they contact me to lash out? Yes. Did they reach out to you in some way to express dissatisfaction? No. Okay. Did you uh, share the questions that Mr. Nadler forwarded to you prior to this hearing with anyone at the White House or the President's legal counsel? Um, Congressman, I did not. So when you claimed earlier that you were going to invoke a privilege, you were invoking a privilege about questions the President hasn't even seen. Uh, Congressman, to be clear, I'm not invoking any privilege. Well, you said earlier that you, in your written testimony, that you would not answer questions about your conversations with the President. Did you not? Yes, I did. So you are not sitting here today saying the president has instructed you not to answer a question, correct? I am not sitting here today saying that the president has instructed So then you're prepared to answer all these questions? Congressman, I think I was pretty explicit in my opening so, statement. So have you spoken to the president, Mr. Whitaker, about the Mueller investigation? Congressman, as I have previously testified, uh, I had, did not talk, talk to the president about the Mueller investigation. Have you ever spoken to the president or, member, or parts of his uh, legal team about information that you've learned in your capacity as acting attorney general related to the Mueller investigation or any other criminal investigation involving the president? Congressman, while I have specifically been saying that I'm not going to comment about my conversations with the president or his senior staff, I have also been very clear that the president has not instructed me to do anything. I said that wasn't my question. My question is, have you had conversations about what you learned? That's a yes or a no. 
Congressman, I have, I spend all day, every day talking. Mr. Whitaker, my question is very specific. Have you spoken to the president or his legal team about what you've learned in the Mueller investigation or the related criminal investigations that may involve the president? Yes or no? Congressman, as I specifically answered earlier to a question. Mr. Whitaker, you're clearly not going to answer the question, so I'm going to move on. Uh, per, you know Professor John Barrett, correct? Well, anyway, he, this is a, a law school professor who tweeted that you told him in June of 2017 that he was flying, that you were flying out from Iowa to New York City to be on CNN regularly because you were hoping to be noticed as a Trump defender and through that to get a Trump judicial appointment back in Iowa. You then went on to describe the Mueller appointment of the special counsel as ridiculous and a little fishy, that Mueller investigating Trump's finances would be going too far, that there is no criminal obstruction of justice charge to be had against President Trump, that there was no collusion with the Russians and the Trump campaign, that any candidate would have taken the same meeting as Donald Trump Jr. with a Russian lawyer, and finally, that a replacement for Sessions could reduce Mueller's budget so low that his investigation grinds to almost a halt. You, you said all those things, and they're all in print, and it answers Mr. Deutsch's question. The American people wonder just how is it that Mr. Whitaker becomes the acting attorney general of the United States in violation of existing statutes? Was he put there for a particular purpose? That wasn't a question. It's a statement. I yield back. I've observed that. The time of the gentleman has expired. Uh, who's next? Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Reschenthaler. Mr. Thank Reschenthaler you, Mr. is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, thank you, Mr. Whitaker, for being here today. I just want to quickly reference the letter that was sent to you from the chair on January 9th. In this letter, in the chairman's own words, it said that this committee was here to, quote unquote, to conduct oversight of the department. In this letter is also important in other topics that were supposed to be discussed here today, like immigration, gun violence, the Violence Against Women's Act, Obamacare, national security. And that's not even the complete list. I know you read the letter. Um, I was excited to be here. I thought these were critically important issues that affected constituents in my district and millions of Americans. And frankly, a lot of these issues are life and death. So I'm really confused as I sit here today in this hearing with my Democrat colleagues focused solely on one topic, and that's the Mueller investigation. I really hope that my friends across the aisle would have used this opportunity for more bipartisanship uh, and less showmanship. But uh, clearly I was wrong. With that said, I want to get to some of the important topics that we were supposed to have focused on today. Uh, one of those is sanctuary cities. In my home state of Pennsylvania, the sanctuary city of Philadelphia has released at least three child molesters back onto the streets. And everyone knows the tragic story of 32-year-old Kate Steinle, who was mur murdered by an illegal immigrant who was convicted of seven felonies and deported five times. Now, those child molesters in Philadelphia the murder of Kate Steinle, they were all released because some city wanted to score cheap political points. And that's why I'm focused on ending sanctuary cities. Mr. Whitaker, what steps is DOJ taking to end the dangerous practice of sanctuary cities? Well, first of all, we're ending taxpayer-funded grants to sanctuary jurisdictions. The Attorney General Sessions announced new conditions for our burn JAG grants uh, that will increase information sharing between federal, state, and local law enforcement to ensure public safety. I don't know if the congressman knows this, but one of the challenges we have is in a sanctuary jurisdiction, they, uh, jails will release convicted criminals back into the community instead of informing Immigration Customs Enforcement that the person is available to be picked up at the jail. It is an incredibly dangerous situation to make an ICE officer go into a community to try to arrest somebody that is here illegally and has been convicted of a crime, oftentimes crimes that, like you mentioned, and I, and, I, and, I, and I cannot imagine a situation where a mayor or a city council or a county executive or otherwise would, would put law enforcement officers in harm's way. It is quite frankly um, bad policy and we are going to work very hard to end it and one of the ways we're ending it is by taking away the resources to those jurisdictions that have that policy. Thank you, Mr. Whitaker. Uh, Mr. Whitaker, I have one more question regarding the opioid crisis. Um, this crisis is, is striking our country hard, particularly southwestern Pennsylvania. Um, data from 2017 shows that it is more likely now that someone's going to die of a drug overdose than a car crash. Uh, my district has been hit really hard, in particular Fayette County saw an 88% increase in over death, uh, overdose deaths from 2015 to 2017. 
Uh, what steps does the D DOJ take to address this shift? And do you think that a lot of the problems that we're seeing in these stats comes from a porous southern border? Uh, to address your second question first, uh, I do believe that most uh, illegal opioids <laughs> like fentanyl, non-prescription illegal opioids like fentanyl, uh, heroin, and their derivatives do are imported through our southern border. Some, uh, not a majority, but some are also imported uh, via direct mail, uh, for example, and ordered off the dark net. Uh, I, I went through a list of things that the Department of Justice is doing to combat this opioid epidemic. I, I hope that this committee, uh, while you know, it's something I was prepared and wanted to talk about, and, I'm, and I appreciate the question, um, will look at other ways that we can put resources into um, the opioid crisis. 